guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the cosine rule. So we can use the cosine rule in two different scenarios. We can use it to find the angle in a triangle, but we must know all three sides of that triangle to be able to find the angle. Or we can use it to find the length of a side in a triangle. But if you're using it to find the length of a side, you must know the lengths of two, the two other sides and the included angle. So the angle that's included is just the angle in between the two sides that you know, okay? Over here, I've written down the formula. So here, it's rearranged in its ideal format to find the length of a side in a triangle. And here, it's exactly the same, it's just been rearranged so that it's in the ideal format to find the angle in a triangle, okay? So if you're good at rearranging formulae, you can just remember one of them and rearrange it to find the other one, okay? And if you're not confident, then you can just remember both of them. And if you're really lucky, your exam board might give this to you at the start of your paper. All right, so here's the first example. So we have to find the length of X, so the length of this side here. And we've been given the two sides here, five centimeters and eight centimeters, and we have the included angle, okay? So the angle in between them, 42.4 degrees. The first thing you should do is start by labeling your triangle. So label the sides A, B, and C, and your angle with capital A, okay? So if you look back at the formula, can you see there's one capital letter, A? That's the angle that you're using in the question, okay? So in this case, this would be angle capital A. And A, B, and C are the lengths of the sides. And it's important that you remember the angle and the side that are opposite opposite each other are both A. So if this is capital A, this is little a, okay? If this had been the angle capital A, this would be the side little a, okay? So those ones are important. So I'm going to label those first. So there's the angle, capital A, and the side which is opposite, little a. Now when you label the other two sides, B and C, it doesn't matter which way round you label them. So I'm going to label this one B and this one C. And now it's really easy. You just substitute into the formula. So because we're finding a side, I'm going to use this version of the formula. Okay, so I'm going to start just by writing it down. So a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus two times b times c times cos a. And now I just need to substitute in the information given from the triangle. So little a is the same as x, so I can change that to x squared instead. Instead of writing b squared, I can replace that with 5 squared. Instead of c squared, we can replace it with 8 squared. And then we have 2 times b times c, so, so 2 times 5 times 8, multiplied by cos capital A, and remember capital A is here, it's the angle, okay, 42.4. Okay, next, what I need to do is get rid of this squared on the x, okay, I want to find the length of x, so to do that I just need to square root both sides of the equation, so when I square root the left hand side it gives me x, which is what I need, and then I need to square root everything I wrote down previously. Okay, so you're just putting this into the calculator. Just be really careful when you do put that in the calculator that you close your brackets, okay? Um, otherwise you'll get an error on the calculator. So when you put that into the calculator, you should get 5.4702 and so on. Now, just read the exam question carefully that you've been given um, to find out how you're expected to round your answers. Usually, uh, with the exam board that I use with my students, we round answers like this to three significant figures. So I want three numbers in my answer, one, two, three. If I check the fourth one, because this is smaller than five, it doesn't round this digit up, okay? It stays the same. So the final answer, the length of x is 5.47 centimetres. Okay. 
Okay, in this next example, we have to work out the angle X, okay, in this triangle. And we know we can use the cosine rule because we know all three sides of this triangle. So just like before, start by labeling your triangle, okay? So label the sides and label the angle. Remember the angle we label as capital A, which means the side opposite here is little a. And then when we label the sides B and C, it doesn't matter which way around you label those. I'm going to label this one B and this one C. So because we're finding an angle, we need to use this version of the formula, okay, which I've written down here. And then you're just substituting in the information from here into the formula, okay? So instead of writing cos capital A, you could write cos X, okay, because this is angle X, but it doesn't matter if you leave it as A. But all of these we're going to change. So instead of little b squared, I'm going to write 6 squared. Instead of c squared, we now have 5 squared. And then we have to minus a squared, so minus 7 squared. And all of that is divided by 2 multiplied by b multiplied by c. So 2 multiplied by 6 multiplied by 5. Okay, so you're literally just substituting in the numbers into the formula, okay? Now, when you put that into the calculator, you get 0 0.2, okay? So that can't be the angle, okay? That's a strange answer for the angle in this triangle. If we look back here, we can see we haven't actually found x yet. This is cos x, okay? So cos x is equal to 0 0.2. So what you need to do to work out the angle x is use shift cos on the calculator to get cos minus 1 and if you find cos minus 1 of 0 0.2 you should get 78.463 and so on okay now again uh, read the question carefully to see how you're expected to round your answers usually angles we would give to uh, one decimal place so that just means you want one number after the decimal point. So if we look at this one, the 6 rounds the 4 up because this is greater than 5. So this gets rounded up to a 5. So the answer is 78.5 degrees. I hope you found those two examples easy to understand. I'll have some more difficult questions on this coming soon. So if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, do so and then you'll receive the update when that one's ready to go.